afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Iceland. And for all of you watching us from the wide webs of internet, welcome again. Sorry for the delay. We have a little bit of a hiccup in the scheduling, so I'm going to have to go over this a little bit faster than expected. But of course, we'll just use technology to fix things, right? Uh, the analytics team is really the team that is giving you this lecture here today. So before we start, give a good hand to my minions, my hard workers, the guys who actually make this stuff. <laughs> and in order to save us time, uh, they will be assisting during the presentation. We will not have time for questions at the end. But during the presentation, you can send uh, questions to uh, CCP Dr. AOG on Twitter. And uh, CCP Quant will be picking them up and answering as we go, in, uh, instead of having questions at the, at the end of the, of the talk. So sorry about the delay, but uh, we will deal it with it this way. And then I will, can pick up after the, after the presentation, can pick up on the questions that are still there unanswered. For those of you on location, just find me on the hallways afterwards, and we will chat. The one that offers me the most beer will get the first question. <laughs> so how are you all doing? <laughs> Rather quiet. Is it too early in the FanFest period? Yeah, trying to pick up the pace. Not enough beer yet. How many have been here before? Good. We like repeat customers. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Uh, we have been here since 2007 as a team of uh, analysts, researchers, economists, uh, statisti statisticians, giving you some insight into the EVE universe. And without any further ado, let's just dive into it. The gross user product for the past kind of uh, 15 to 18 months. I will be adding some Q1 data since it's already Q2 in 2014, so we will have it a little bit up to date. But remember that the gross user product is the GDP of EVE Online. It is how much value, economic value, is created within the system once you have subtracted all the cost of creating that value. And in 2013, and into this uh, uh, quarter, you can see that if you look at uh, the uh, yellow line, and you compare those numbers to the yellow numbers on the, on the right, and you look at the green columns, and you compare them to the green numbers on the left, you can see that there's a fairly good stability throughout the year, with a dip around mid of the year. And it kind of gives us this feeling that there was not much going on from the economic standpoint in 2013. Which is absolutely not true. This happens because we are looking at the economy from a very high level. We are looking at it in nominal terms, total value produced, and in real terms. And as, as an example, if you look at here in December 2013, the nominal value created in EVE Online on a monthly basis is roughly around 140 trillions. Uh, per, per month, which is roughly the same as it was in January of 2013. And January 2013 was a good increase from December 2012. So the system is growing. But the changes that we did to the game in 2013 and the way the players have played the game has created this kind of relative uh, stability throughout the, throughout the year. And you can see that uh, it continues to be at this level now into the, into the first quarter of, uh, of 2014. Uh, also note there that the real GDP, when adjusted for inflation, is at very similar levels as it was in the beginning of the year. And if you look at the two lines, the two yellow lines, you can see that the difference is slightly so decreasing over the year. 
Again, I have to tell you guys that the perception of inflation in EVE is not reality. In real terms, because there's actually deflation in the system, in real terms, it is increasing over time. And we'll dive a little bit further into that now. If you look at our standard uh, price indices, the yellow line that you see there, the yellow line is the consumer price index, and this actually includes Plex. Generally, when I show this number, I do not include Plex in the number because Plex is not really a consumable uh, for players in terms of gameplay. It's a consumable in terms of game time. And it's a value storage. It's almost like gold, as we will touch up on a little bit later. But what you see there is that the yellow line is uh, kind of flat. If we, if we put the index at 100 in the beginning of 2013, it is kind of flat throughout the year and with a slight decrease even when you take into account the price hikes of Plex throughout the year. The changes that we did in Odyssey uh, kind of caused a disruption in the force, the economic force, that is. And we could see that the ore composition changes and the moon mineral changes kind of helped on the deflation front as uh, materials became more readily available and, sh and resource usage was shifted around, which then changed again in Rubicon, and we got a little bit of a price increase during that time period. So within the year, there are fluctuations. If we ask an example, just look at it on a monthly basis, then uh, uh, this is kind of the uh, heartbeat of EVE prices throughout the year. We have the dip in the first quarter prior to an expansion. People get interested and they come in and they operate on an increased pace. So inflation picks up a little bit. Again, in the next expansion cycle, the Rubicon expansion, pace picks up a little bit. But overall, when you add all, the, all of these monthly changes up for the year, there's actually a deflation in 20. 13. And deflation is not necessarily something that I am interested in having for a very long time. And uh, as you can see there, it's picking up towards the end of, of Q1. And the green area in general is the uh, benchmark that we have uh, for the inflation in Evil Line. We try to keep it between plus and minus 1% uh, during the a course of a course of a month. And even though I say myself, this is much better than the Iceland Icelandic Central Bank has been able to do in the past 20 years. <laughs> now, what is the cause of this deflation? Is Eve dying? No. Good. Just checking. No, it's the changes that we have done to the system. And uh, basically, if, if, uh, efficiency has increased dramatically throughout the year. It started with the retribution and uh, the satellite drones. Anyone deployed a satellite drone? I thought you were, in, were uh, not mission runners. I thought these were the industrialists, the tycoons that controlled the mission runners. Anyhow, it increased the efficiency. And if you look at the numbers there, you can see that the uh, activity of a successful, successful salvage increased by 67% after the salvage drones were introduced. And again, towards the end of the year, after the mobile tractor units were deployed. Oh, I love those mobile tractor units. That's a true slave. Just throw him out there and just does the job. And of course, economics works in EVE Online, as you all know. This results in more than a 40% drop in salvage prices. And this is just basic salvage that we're talking about here, not wormhole, wormhole salvaging. 
And the secondary pro uh, product producer price index that we are measuring here is a very important part of the overall uh, price index in EVE. So it shows us that it's like a technological change that happened in EVE Online in 2013 that is driving the deflation. Just like in reality, if something new was invented that will cause people to be more effective, would help them to produce more for less, which is what we are also uh, aiming for. This results in more stuff being available, more activity being done, even though there is a deflation. So in class classical economic terms, economists would panic with deflation of this level. We are not panicking. We are seeing this as a clear signal of how, the, how effective the economy is. But there is a little bit of a nagging feeling here. It's not a panic feeling, it's more like, yeah, I hate this economic stuff, it's so dismal. Well, finally, when you get it right, it just gets boring. So, we need to do something about it, but let's look at uh, the cause of uh, all inflation or deflation in time, which is a monetary uh, issue. If you look at the top uh, sinks and faucets, uh, the five uh, faucets are to the left in, in blue, and the uh, top uh, sinks are to the right in, in, in red. If anyone was worried about incursions, they are not really a problem as such. They were balanced back in 2012, and uh, they are not causing the economy to explode. They're not causing anything uh, to be out of uh, proportion, even though that those that participate are able to earn uh, a good living. So we don't see it as a problem, at least not as of yet. And the LP store has been coming very strong in, in 2013, being one of the most important sinks of ISK. And if you kind of look at it over the year, net, there are about 20 to uh, yeah, 30 trillions max added on a monthly basis of ISK into the economy. This does not take into account if a person leaves and uh, stops subscribing, because that ISK then becomes inactive. But if the person decides to come back, uh, that ISK becomes active again. So this does not take those kind of changes into account, but this is just net ISK added to the system. And we feel that these are very healthy levels. And as you have seen earlier, we are not dealing with any infl infl inflation problems uh, in 20, 2013. Did I say people that leave? Does anyone leave if? They only take a break, thank you. And your stuff is always there, remember that. Your stuff is always there. Uh, in June, we saw actually quite a, a de decline in this net increase. This is when new people come in, they buy a lot of blueprints, they buy a lot of skills, and that sinks money out of the system. And then in uh, Q3, when we have kind of an easy going uh, period for uh, the EVE economy, it's not yet a new expansion. Uh, people are participating, but maybe not at the same level as before. So they're not buying this additional stuff that they need to build up the economy. And hence, less is synced out and more stays in the game. But overall, this is a very healthy uh, sign uh, for us that are dealing with watching these numbers on a, on a monthly and even daily basis. So everything is fine. Why does this guy then keep coming up? <laughs> I thought I killed him back in 2011 and 12. And he keeps showing up on the internet, often with a tinfoil hat, I know. But why are they screaming? Let's look at that in a little bit more detail. Now, Plex as a product has increased usage uh, since 2008, when it was uh, first introduced. And at times, yes, prices have increased, and even, we can say, quite rapidly in 20, 2013. 
But it is not a consumer good, as I mentioned earlier. It is not a driver for inflation of other items. There's a completely different market going on in, uh, on the, in uh, completely different thinking going on on the Plex market than there is when people are buying stuff to consume, stuff to get out there and getting destroyed. Well, I know there are some that take Plex out and get destroyed, but I know, have no way what they are thinking. <laughs> but please, keep doing it. <laughs> but the biggest way of getting rid of Plex is actually just by putting it out as a subscription. So this has become, as I have mentioned before, one of the most important items, and it is truly showing a behavior as gold does in real life. When people believe that there might be inflation, they want to go and buy Plex to kind of keep their value. If they take a break from the game, they want to store their value in, in Plex because they have this direct connection to a US, do US dollar value or a real life, right, real life value. But since it behaves like gold, we really need to stop thinking of it as being a problem for economic inflation in EVE. You can have all the opinions that you have on if it's the right or the wrong price for the Plex, due to it being a, something that you can exchange for subscription time. But it will not impact the basic economic consumption of ETH. So let's look at the Plex price development, and you'll see once you take the 30,000 foot view that things were not really that crazy in, in 2013. This starts in the beginning of the year in January, and throughout the year it is kind of uh, between five, 600 million ISK until we hit uh, November and December, as we would expect around an expansion. Increased uh, demand uh, with a relatively a fixed growing supply, but there is an interesting phenomenon going on on this graph. Do you spot it? And remember what I told you from the er earlier slide. I told you sales of Plex have been increasing throughout the lifetime of Plex. Less on the market. Thank you. Where are you? I owe you a beer. There, this guy. Look at him. I owe this guy a beer. Yes, there is something going on in the system in the way that people are not willing to put the Plex just out there. In economic terms, we would call it as a decreased velocity. And if you read the numbers from the right, the, this is the in-game trade. There are 140, 160,000 Plexes traded on the market per month. The velocity is greater than one, meaning that each Plex gets traded more often than one. So this is not the total sales of Plex during a month. It's the in-game trade. And as usage were increasing, people were just putting less and less on the market. Well, is that the fact? And I'll, I'll pick up on this question, because I'm sure that that question is, is on, on Twitter. Uh, we have added services for Plex, so people may have the perception that it's good to have a Plex if they wanted to buy that service. But vast majority of Plexes are used for subscription still. So it's, it's, it might be a marginal driver, but it's not the biggest driver at, at this point in time. So uh, when you start looking at 2014 with this decreased velocity, I started to have a, a little bit of an uneasy feeling. And the Plex pricing policy is absolutely unchanged. This has been the policy for three years, and the Eve Central Bank does monitor these numbers on a daily basis and make sure that we believe that the market is healthy. And when I am judging if a market is healthy, I am looking at how many people are participating, uh, is any hoarding going on, is any trying to corner the market? Well, of course you're trying to corner the market, but is any using unusual methods that we can detect? That's how I measure the health of market. It is a true PVP competition between people trying to outperform each other. And if that causes a price hike, that's absolutely normal. But did we do anything to stabilize the market? Where's the drum solo? In 2013, 
no intervention, intervention, not a single one. So, go to the next slide. Or not. You see it's 2014 now. And in March, specifically around the middle of March, I started to spot really alarming trends. The pace of the increase of the price was uncomfortable. So I started to monitor it even more closely. And you can see this rapid increase there around the middle of the month. It looked like we were heading into a, a pause, but it was followed by another sharp increase. And that was when I decided it was time for an intervention. I shall not tell you how and why and how much, but I'll tell you it was successful. <laughs> so I do reserve the rights that if we feel that the market is not representing a good, efficient market at any given time, we will intervene. But I always know and feel that this is not the way to go for any long-term stability. A price is a price. People have been posting on the internet, oh, wait until the price reaches a billion. Why a billion? That's low. Serenity prices are 3.6 billion perplex. Yeah. What is the right price? This is not the show what's the right price, right? There is no right price. You're learning. Well, nice to have these repeat customers coming over and over again so I can know that in 10 years' time my message will have been learned and the system will behave as I want to. <laughs> so, without any further ado, as you can see here, just look at the, this is an in-game graph, so I'm not giving you any more information except just telling you about the interve uh, intervention. Then you can read from the in-game uh, data available. But you can see that we did not do any significant increase in the trade, even though I can tell you we did do our little trickery and use tactics that helped uh, stabilize the price, at least for a while. But so much for inflation, so much for the economy, back to what it's really all about, consumption. Consumption of titans, specifically. <laughs> we introduced this graph uh, last year, so I decided to give you a snapshot as well. Uh, no big changes in the overall destruction in 2013, where you can see the production on your left side and destruction on, on the right side. People are producing stuff in high sec and low sec and getting it destroyed in null sec kind of has a rough story. But there was another story. Back in January 2014, and now you will see this graph that I showed you for a full year, you will see it on a monthly basis. So the ratios are not exactly the same. But in January, 54 trillions were destroyed, about 1.7 per day. And there was this little fight that was going on. I am not a PVPer. Put me in a ship and put me in Nolsic and you will have an easy prey. Uh, I am not a fleet commander. Give me a Titan and I would fly it into a star. <laughs> but I do love consumption. <laughs> and I've been waiting for this day ever since I started EVE. I remember having discussion with my colleagues back in 2008 and 9, and I'm relatively new to the job, and say, you know, why aren't they just fighting each other on Titans? Why don't they just show up all of the Titans and try to shoot each other? And they thought I was crazy. <laughs> Nobody would do that, they're way too expensive, and these are very strategic weapons and so on. Well, <laughs> so, as you can see that in January, the Halloween Wars ended in a very subtle way of dealing with too many people coming into the same system at the same time, really giving the EVE economy a boost, but number one, two or three, giving us good stories. It's all about us and the stories. Uh, back in February, things kind of just even out right away, and you can just see on these two graphs 
how big of an impact uh, this battle was. And then, if you go back into April, <laughs> yeah, it just got a burn. But having, given the fact that we had such a good PvP activity in Q1, how does it compare to the infamous uh, Asakai <laughs> battle? You know, we believed Asakai was something absolutely wonderful. It was a big battle, it got a lot of buzz, showed people how a significant battle can come from a very small mistake. And nobody said, this will never happen again. <laughs> sure not. So even a smaller mistake, even not a mistake of controls, but just forgetting something, brought us a, a battle that was also quite different. You can see how the Asakai battle was just a quick build-up, reached a climax, and then just people went away, and three titans, I think, were destroyed. And people went happy back home and had a lot to talk about. Uh, the bloodbath, the BR5RB battle, you can say it. BR5RB, say it fast. BR5RB, BR5RB, be right back. Or beer. You can see that from downtime to downtime, it was a fairly rapid uh, build-up, but it lasted for so long, because it does take time, this hard work of grinding down titans. So you can see how uh, the systems were able to cope with it. Uh, Titan did kick in a little bit. <laughs> yeah, just tiny. But uh, overall, uh, this was a great experience and showed what you guys can truly do in this awesome sandbox. And I can't wait for the next mistake. <laughs> now, you are being challenged. Indeed. If we know that uh, Asakai was uh, smaller than, than the bloodbath, but the EVE universe, we will have to start to think bigger now, guys. Yes, EVE Online has been around for a decade. We are into the second decade. It's the EVE universe that's going to expand over the, over the second decade. And even though Serenity has considerably fewer pilots on a regular basis, they beat you. They were able to have the battle for longer, and they were actually most likely, not quite sure if we have the data absolutely right, but they're most likely peaked with a little bit uh, more of pilots in space. I was trying to put an economic value on this, and I just realized that if I would put it into this slide show, we would have to have another hour. So we'll try to put that out as a dead block or find other ways of getting the economic value there. Because as I said earlier, if you compare it in ISK, when the Plex is worth 3.6 billion ISK on the Serenity server, you will have to do some uh, what is called uh, purchasing power parity uh, analysis to be able to talk about true value being lost. But it showed you that the scale, this shows you that the scale of the battle was absolutely comparable uh, to what happened uh, on the good day of the bloodbath. And I can't wait to see who will make a bigger mistake in 2014. These wonderful things. We have always been kind of tight-lipped about the Titans. But of course, you guys know how much is being destroyed on a regular basis. I've decided to stick my head out and do this. So, this shows you production on a quarterly basis. I wasn't ready to go on a monthly basis. Shows you a production of quarterly basis from 2010. And these go up to 100 a month, even though in the past two years, it has been kind of averaging around 60, 70 a month. Oh, sorry, a quarter, a quarter. Keep it straight, 60, 70 per quarter. Now, if we look at how many deaths there were, <laughs> the 
This really shows us why the battle was such a significant event for EVE Online. Not only was it significant due to the size of the battle, to the circumstances, to the sovereignty uh, gameplay that was at, at hand, it was really a change in how Titans were fielded, and it was a much needed change. Interesting to see how 2012 and 2013 had relatively fewer Titans being killed, at the same time as production was very stable. There are between 15 and 1,800 Titans in, uh, in EVE today. Some of them are inactive accounts, of course, and so on, so I'm not going to tell you how many there are active ones. But these are a substantial number of titanium units that need to be destroyed. And I want to see more of that consumption. So as a thank you for bringing these Titans to the field, I decided that you deserve to see these numbers at this point in time. Yes, it was truly a moment of the Titans and truly in the biggest sandbox style that we can imagine. And back into the second decade. How are we doing on time now since I was starting a little bit later? We are surviving the time. The journey has started into the second decade. Uh, market history data is available via the Crest uh, gateway. Uh, we have posted uh, a link that shows how data can be retrieved and used uh, for market analysis from your standpoint. And if you go to the third party developers tool roundtable on Saturday at, at three o'clock, you will learn what else is coming in 2014. So imagine having more and more of this data available. Not only will we get these sandbox style battles that are enormous, but you guys will be able to go ahead and do your own analysis of these numbers. So we stood here last year and told you that this is what we wanted. This is the first year into the second decade. We are moving ahead. And we will be moving so at a, uh, at a steady pace over the next 10 years. Nobody of you is retiring anytime soon, right? So we have uh, plenty of time ahead of us. Uh, if you go on the internet, you do find very interesting discussion on EVE, the economy of EVE, and people are augmenting it already with the data available. There's a videos that show deaths in the system. This one shows deaths over two months. I will not play it now, but you can find it uh, on, the, on the YouTube channel. I'll post it on the, on the tweet link. It is actually on my, on my tweet, uh, since a player posted it there. The Nosy Gamer, he wrote a very interesting uh, piece on uh, RMT, Plex prices, and used the market data com to come up with this graph that looks in a different way than I had thought myself about the ratio between ISK and Plex pr prices and RMT. So already by having access just to historical data, they're able to augment their own analysis by using it. Uh, the third then, inflation in EVE he would have benefited quite a bit from this lecture. But at the same time, having access to the data, because he posted a lot of questions, having access to this data would have helped him to do his analysis even better. And yes, flex prices and CCP's responsibility. These are the type of articles that I love. Critique on us as operator janitor, janitors of this universe holding us accountable, holding us responsible to making sure that the systems are working, using our own systems and our own data to show that if they're right or if they're wrong. So this is really what I like about giving you guys more data, to get critical review of us, of the work that we do, so we can go even further as a universe, as our own world. And they took one of the graphs that we had posted and put their own analysis on those price indices and pointed out things that maybe we, we might miss. So how can we take this to the next level? You see, we are not going to uh, read the internet every day and comment on all that's going on out there. That's not going to happen. Uh, 
but that discussion can greatly improve. And we can even go to a peer-reviewed process where we can give you access to different type of data, even help you with interpretations to kind of increase the depth of discussion. It is not thought of something that should replace, uh, it should not replace blocks, it should not re replace commentary. I do want to see the tinfoilery. I do want to be passed with all kinds of, of, of opinions. But I do miss, maybe it's just the good old academic uh, in me, but I do this in-depth discussion, being able to go into the methodology. We know what were you really meaning when you did that. So we're going to try this peer-reviewed process. So by June 1st, you guys will be able to submit to an email address a robust paper with methodologies, with using data that's available, uh, requesting further assistance. We will review them through a, a peer review process. And if it is accepted, it uh, could even be uh, published on our own websites or on your own, on, on your own website or on CCP's website. I think by going this way, testing it, uh, we get better interactions uh, with uh, people. We get better and more in depth, and we are able to enhance what's already already out there. So with that, more player-driven analysis, fairly stable economy, having learned the Plex market, trying to understand how it's functioning, where do we stand today? It is stagnant, but in the sense of it's a, it's a good equ equilibrium, but there's nothing really new going on. And we really don't that for long, do we? Uh, will the better information just change 0 0.01 to 0 0.00001 war? That is more efficiency. That's a faster pace. In economic terms, that's great. I'm not so sure that's what we're looking for. It is time to shake things up a little bit. And I must say, as I stand here, thinking about what has happened in the past six months, that this expansion will be the biggest change that has been done for the EVE industry since we launched. Simply. I know a lot of people think these are just little changes here and there, but if you read the blocks that have been going out in the past 10 days, you start to realize that you are changing one parameter on the left, another one on the right, another one in the middle, but they're all interconnected. If we look at the, what it means, there will be changes in the reprocessing. So the way you transfer uh, minerals, uh, uh, or minerals and, and, and products, the way you acquire them, you need to think, rethink that. The manufacturing system to change, so you have a better access, there will be new competition coming in, be aware. The UI will definitely help with that, so there are more people making these decisions. And the refactoring uh, to the research system will make that even easier. And the scaling costs for the slots, all of a sudden, it isn't based on limited quantity of slots, but rather cost. As an economist, I love that. You have to make a production decision in the ever-changing environment. And you can hire teams that make you more efficient, just like you would hire workers into a new factory, and the better workers will give you bigger, bigger benefits. And there are consequences to hiring those teams for the system as a whole. So I do encourage all of you to read those blocks in detail. And I don't think that you realize until you have read all of them what a big change this is going to be. But please don't disappear from FanFest and start doing your spreadsheets. <laughs> you will have time to do that when you get home next week. <laughs> so, I can put it all into e economic jargon and say, relative demand for various resources, in addition to technical advantages and increased efficiency in manufacturing, 
will bring on severe pressure for new market equilibrium on almost any item that is out there today. If this is not going to be a fun year for the industrialist, I don't know what is. So let's give a great hand to the developers that have come up with this. <laughs> and let the games begin. And I remind you that there will be a lot of talk, uh, roundtables, other presentations. You already had one just before this session on these changes. And I do encourage you to get you yourself to know them. Having said all of that, I thank you for your attention. I hope you liked it. Uh, we will be available on the hallways to uh, take further questions. Put those questions on Twitter. Uh, where are my minions? Any questions on, on the Twitter? Yes, plenty. plenty. <laughs> One or two. Excellent. So we'll be able to continue the discussion uh, after this. Thank you for now. See you around FanFest. Have a lot of fun. Little bit of beer. <laughs> and I'll see you all Saturday night. Thank you.